Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We're going to have more and more people, I think, join us in the room, but we'll go ahead and uh, kick off our webinar on eight ways to find influencers in 2023. Uh, my name is Ryan Hilliard. I'm the GM of North America here at Hype Auditor. We're an influencer mar marketing platform helping brands and agencies find creators, manage campaigns. Uh, and we spent a lot of time putting this webinar together, thinking about uh, the challenge of influencer discovery as brands and agencies are moving into the new year, facing uh, uh, different hurdles around privacy and changes with, with how some platforms are working. And so we wanted to pull together uh, different approaches that we feel like help separate uh, like the world's leading most innovative brands from, from the pack in, in terms of how they're finding influencers. Uh, before we dive in, just a few housekeeping things that I had. Uh, we have the chat open on, on YouTube where you're joining. Feel free to go ahead and drop questions directly in the chat. Uh, Depending on the nature of the question and where we are in the slides, I might answer it in the moment. We might wait until uh, the end of the webinar, but uh, we'll definitely ha have time to dive into your questions. They can be as specific or as broad as you would prefer. Uh, uh, whatever is going to bring the most value to you, that's, that's what we're here for. We're trying to, to educate and to learn and, and make sure that we're all improving as, as marketers. Um, at the end of the webinar, and you probably saw a note about this, uh, when the emails went out, but we do have an offer for anybody that attends the webinar. Uh, I'll share the link as we get to that last slide, but you'll be able to request from, from Hype Auditor uh, a list of 10 relevant influencers for yourself. You'll see there's a field where you can say, this is the type of person I'm looking for. Uh, this is the amount of followers that they have. This is the engagement that they have. Whatever details that you might think about, especially as we're going through this webinar and these different approaches, we're going to use those approaches and send along uh, uh, 10 influencers for free with, with metrics around them, uh, around their audience quality and uh, their engagement rates and their following and, and whatnot. So stay through the end of the webinar to make sure that you get that link. Uh, I will be holding it off as it's our last, our second to last slide. So uh, that's when that will become available. We'll be recording this. Uh, so it'll be available for folks that aren't able to attend uh, and the link will go out should you want to share this with a, a colleague. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Cool. So today's agenda uh, is really centered around the importance of influencer discovery. Uh, I took a look at uh, the different registrants that we had for the webinar today. And there's a huge mix of brands and agencies and then brands and agencies of all sizes. And so one of the things that I, I certainly understand going into this and I ask you all as you're attending this to recognize is that people are in very, very different places when it comes to integrating influencer marketing into their marketing stack, uh, whatever that mix might be. And so some of these things are going to be logical for you. Some of them are going to be brand new. Uh, and so we've tried to cater this uh, to a, a really, really broad following, but I think it'll be really insightful, very actionable. Um, so we're going to dive into why influencer discovery should be a constant thing. A lot of times people will think about influencer discovery and influencer campaigns as this short-term initiative. I'm going to run this through Q4 and then I'm going to put it down and I'll pick it back up nine months later. And, and we're going to detail why it's critical to do this year round and, and, and what factors go into that. Uh, we'll go into how people typically find creators and influencers those really, really traditional ways. They're not bad ways. They're just not always the most scalable or the most innovative ways. Uh, and then how to find influencers in 2023. Uh, and we're not talking about connecting with uh, celebrities or if you, if you did a list search for the top 10 influencers in 2023, you know, people with millions and millions of followers, this is going to be a, applicable to looking for micro or even nano influencers within your very, very specific niche that's relevant to you. This, this applies to that level. Uh, and it's based off of personal experience, experience from our team and even experience from some of our customers. Great. So again, ask any questions that you'd like in the chat. Uh, we'll be doing our, our, we'll share that link where you can request your own uh, influencer report based off of the personalization uh, and parameters that you would like. Uh, and we'll just kick it off. Awesome. So, uh, uh, 
folks that know me know that I, I like really horrible jokes, but one of the things I think that is really important to underline is you're thinking about influencer discovery, finding new influencers in, in 2023. And you probably saw this uh, rear its head in Q4. If you were an e-commerce brand, you're trying to, to get the ball rolling from standing still to, to scaling up really quickly. Like your other digital marketing initiatives is uh, the most effective way to do influencer discovery is to, to be doing it year round or follow uh, these uh, really horrible ABCs of always be recruiting. Uh, you should be thinking about influencer discovery, even when you're outside of your campaigns. Uh, even if you're thinking, well, I'm not starting something until July when we're going to do a new product launch, we're going to do a new website launch. You need to be thinking about it constantly. And I'll dive into some of those reasons why that's the case. So number one, uh, especially if you already have an existing portfolio or network of influencers that you're working with, uh, you're going to find that the influencers that you're working with, the performance of those engagements are going to change over time for a number of different reasons. Uh, one being their growth, their engagement with their audience is going to shrink or change over time. And that's just the reality of it, right? Uh, if you continue to send messages constantly to the same folks over and over again, you're going to reach some saturation. You're going to see some flattening engagement rates. And so you need to be looking for new uh, emerging influencers because you're going to see this performance change over time. Uh, another reason and I sort of touched on this last time is creators are always appearing. Net new networks are always appearing. And so this change is extremely constant right now. And, and it's going to be for the foreseeable future. So if your approach to influencer marketing is, well, I've got my six or seven folks. They're great. We've been working with them for a few years. If you went and looked at the market now, you probably would find uh, three or four times that many that are even more relevant with even higher engagement than you had before, because you're sort of stuck. Uh, this change is constant. People have to keep up with the constant change as well. The way that these different social networks perform is, is very much different. Uh, and then also thinking about other platforms that these influencers are using, if they're beginning to expand into podcasts or writing blogs that have other uh, historically, maybe more traditional ways of, of capturing an audience, maybe longer form, those types of things you're not going to capture if you just stick with your, your same old, same old list. They might be good, right? They might be great. They might be very effective partnerships, but this is why you want to always be expanding and looking for, for new opportunities because you want to capture the upside of that change. Uh, and the last thing, and we underlined this a little bit at the beginning, but your addressable market, if you think about this in a paid search context, which, which I do, my, my uh, first uh, job out of college, or maybe my second job out of college, I worked at a digital marketing agency uh, for eight years, very early on. And, and you, we definitely saw this change where like you go all in on these keywords or all in on this audience if you market to that same mix all of the time, eventually you will find saturation. You will run out of new users that you're reaching out to. And so you need to be able to find new potential customers, find new expandable markets so that you can continue to grow the business. In some industries, if you're in some, uh, an industry where it's emerging, it's growing really, really rapidly, you can ride that tide for sure. But if you're selling uh, goods that have always been there, uh, and, and yours is unique, but it's it's the same market. You need to be able to find ways to get a broader appeal and a broader reach. Sticking with the same folks, uh, you're not going to do that. And you're going to find that the ROI of your campaigns is steadily going to go down. And the, the costs working with those influencers might actually be going up over time. And so you just run into a, a situation that you, that's not ideal as a marketer. And if we think about things through the lens of 2023, where most marketing teams are going to be asked to do more with less, you can't afford to do that. You need to find new creators to work with and new efficiencies and new people to address uh, just so that you can grow that overall revenue. So, so those are the three reasons why uh, you should always be recruiting. Remember the, those ABCs of influencer marketing. And so when most folks try to approach uh, influencer discovery, finding new creators, they typically take uh, the three approaches that we're gonna highlight next. And these work. Uh, but there are some limits uh, for, for newer folks to influence marketing and, and for those brands or agencies here that have very established campaigns. I think you guys recognize that you're an early adopter on this trend. You're moving quicker. And so there's most brands are not just now getting into the mix of influencer marketing. And for most of those, they're thinking, 
I know this perfect influencer. If we could just work with them, it would be ideal. Maybe they're a customer. Uh, maybe somebody has a relationship with them, but they are just perfect. Uh, they're so aligned with what we do. All of their content is great. I follow them personally, right? Those are great creators to work with. The problem is they're not very scalable, right? Uh, you need to find something where you can rinse and repeat. I found this person. Now I can find dozens and dozens and dozens of influencers just like them, creating the same type of content like them. Not just, I know a person that would be great. You need to be able to expand beyond that. Another uh, approach, and, and, and I actually had this happen myself in my career, is I know a person, right? Through some indirect relationship, I'm able to get access to this great creator, uh, and it will be awesome. Again, the challenge is it's not super scalable, but as you're getting going, as you're trying to get things moving, sure, this could be great. Uh, but going all in on one person, whether it's a, an ideal fit or just a relationship that you have, you're going to run into that saturation problem. You need to be able to expand beyond that. And so we run into the same scalability problem. How can I do this over and over again to broaden my reach? I can't when it's all based off of people I know. Uh, and then the third one, and this is this is really, really common, is working with agencies. And agencies are great. That's, in my experience, uh, we did a lot of influencer marketing at my last company using agencies to recruit. Uh, the challenge, though, that we run you run into as a, as a marketer, if you are the brand, right, if you're thinking about this from the brand perspective, is you have a little bit of a bottleneck. I need a new, cre I want new creators. I need to relay this information to my agency partner. They have to go do it. Uh, now there could be some quality control benefits there. They might have their own network, uh, but you do still run into issues where you're not controlling the process as much. You're not able to move as quickly. And a lot of times agencies, if they establish a network, that, that network isn't always growing. So you need to take control of that. And if you're an agency, I think it's always worthwhile to look internally and go, have, has our own network stagnated a bit? Have we been working with the same creators over and over again? Yes, they might be high quality, but there's benefits to expanding that reach. Uh, we'll see greater performance for our clients and thus we'll have stronger retention, drive greater results. Uh, and so through that same lens, it applies here. And so when we're thinking about how can we find creators and influencers in 2023, there's a few things that we just need to make sure that we're prioritizing to make sure that's effective and scalable. Uh, number one, right, scalability. Can we rinse and repeat this process? If if influencer marketing is like paid ads, right, where you, you get a re predictable return, the goal for you should be, how can I put in more dollars? And so the only way that you can do that is by having a, uh, a repeatable process for discovering new influencers. It needs to be something that you can just go to the, the fountain, as it were, find new people to work with and have processes that are scalable that you can continue to reach out to them really, really quickly and continue to grow that network. The second thing is you need to make sure that you're able to maintain this alignment with your brand, how you speak about things, what you stand for. That alignment is critical to drive results. So you need something scalable, but still quality control and aligned. Uh, you need that relevance. You need to be able to look at the content of these influencers to make sure this isn't gonna be coming from out of left field. Uh, and then lastly, you need to be able to do all of this while everything is changing every single day. You need to be able to capture brand new people that are coming into the mix early, early on so that you can maximize the return on that investment. You don't want to be ca capturing uh, creators if they're beginning to slide, if their growth is no longer there, their engagement's going down, their follower count's going down. You need to catch people when they're growing early. And so you, you're, you're sort of tasked with a really, really tricky uh uh, conundrum thing that you have to overcome. And so what we'll dive into today are these eight different methods that sort of check all of these boxes, uh, but are a little outside of the norm of what you may have tried in the past. Cool. So the first one is, is pretty obvious. This is something that some folks do, but it's also often overlooked for, for new brands that they just simply don't think about it. Uh, you have, if you're an e-commerce company, you've built out this customer list of people that have bought from you in the past, people that love your product, you need to mine through there and figure out, are there creators in here, people that I can partner with that already are familiar with who I am, what I do, they like what we do. This is the perfect relationship. And I'm continuing to get new customers every day, which means I'm continuing to have this potential to work with people that have influence around those folks around them. And so mining through 
your existing list of customers, email subscribers is a, is a tremendous way to find authentic uh, in, uh, influencers and creators, people that are constantly getting into this list new every single day. Uh, and they are going to be really, really familiar with your brand, with your process, process for purchasing, which is going to make your life really, really simple when you think about the operational piece of this, so onboarding a new influencer, getting them product, uh, talking about the things that you want to promote. This makes the process really, really simple. Uh, one thing you probably will observe is if you're a brand new startup, direct to consumer uh, company, uh, you don't have hundreds or thousands of customers yet, yet this might not be your ideal place to start. Uh, but if you're an established brand, if you've got years of history selling, this is a great logical first place uh, to go after. And you're going to see a really, really high uh, uh, response rate from creators because they're already familiar with your brand. So the second uh, thing to be looking out for is, is trending creators, people that are in your sort of segment of where your audience likes to hang out, but are seeing rapid, rapid growth. But before, you know, there's sort of a national name, right? Finding people that are at that inflection point of all of a sudden, they're starting to get lots and lots of followers. Uh, how can we spot them earlier? And so finding tools that allow you to see like, hey, Here's somebody in my vertical, in my region, that looks like they're starting to see some really incredible growth week over week. They're seeing this really increase, significant increase. If we invest in them now and they continue to grow, we're going to see a huge return on that investment because our content is still going to be out there as they're continuing to get new followers and more and more followers. And so there's a huge benefit there uh, for your overall ROI of your campaigns. Uh, I mentioned before like that discounted value right you're you're going to put in a thousand dollars for them when maybe in two months they'll they'd be charging ten thousand dollars for the same type of relationship this this shouldn't be underestimated it's all about how can i find a way to to spot these creators and so it's all about monitoring hashtags and looking really really closely at mentions and things that you care about uh, for those creators or, or using tools that make it really really easy I got one question just thinking about that previous slide around uh, existing customers or subscribers. Uh, there's, there's probably two ways to do it. Uh, I want to touch on this before we jump all the way forward because uh, we'll be moving through our, our six other ways of finding influencers uh, manually, right? You can always look through and, and if it's a notable name, uh, right? If it's a celebrity, this is something that you can obviously spot. Um, you might even have some inbound inquiries, but I think a lot of it's going to really rely on a tool or a system where it's like, how can I take this list of emails and essentially scrub it against uh, social profiles and figure out who in here already has some existing influence. It might not be that you're looking for somebody that has uh, 150 or 450,000 followers. It could be, you know, I'd love to find, uh, do UGC campaigns with people that have two or 3,000 followers or 1,500 followers. Like that, I, I just want somebody that I can continue to promote my product. And so a lot of times tools will make this really, really simple. And I know that we at Hypotter have a, a, a great system for basically just importing that list similar to, similar to what you would do for your social remarketing or your Google Ads list targeting. Uh, you just import that list and you look for it. Cool. So the third way for, for finding influencers in, in 2023 is looking for influencers that are mentioning other brands, not necessarily competitors, but brands that have similar buyers to you. So people that buy uh, men's modern accessories might also buy men's modern furniture. So there's a relationship there. It's probably the same person. And so who are the brands working with that fall into this accessories category that I could potentially reach out to with my furniture category? It's the same audience. It's just another way of getting in front of them. And so complementary products, same persona. This is a really, really way, great way to find pre-qualified buyers in the sense of you're not having to do a lot of education. They should be familiar with you in general or, or the, the service that you're providing. So not just I want the, the influencer that's in this spot always talking about my exact type of content, but look for adjacent content. Uh, uh, this is a really, really tremendous way of unlocking new creators that are already doing commercial relationships, which means that you're going to be able to get a higher response rate. All of that uh, really adds up to a tremendous value for, for finding new influencers. Uh, I got a question. This sounds like a, almost like a customer question around where can I see trending influencers? There are reports 
uh, uh, like within our own platform where you can actually just see training influencers on the left hand side under market analysis uh, and then search based off of different locations or different industries. Um, and, and we can always follow up. I'll have my contact information uh, for the person at JA. If you want to reach out to me, we can make sure that you're able to find that. Uh, here, very similar to the last one, mentions of familiar brands. How about mentions of competitors, right? Uh, not just, you're probably not going to want to pull over an influencer that's a sponsored, doing sponsored posts for your competition. It's not going to feel very authentic. But if you can find creators that seem to mention or seem to have uh, in their posts some of your competitors, uh, there could be an opportunity to try to move them over to you with sponsored, uh, sponsored posts. Uh, help them understand, hey, this is the value that we can provide. Maybe you can win them and win an advocate uh, for uh, for your own growth efforts. Um, the other side of it is you could actually look up, how can I find creators similar to those that my competitors are using? If you're a newer brand to influencer marketing and you feel like this brand over here does a really, really good job, our competitor does a really, really good job, how can we find people like the people that they work with? Uh, using tools or even you can manually do this uh, with, within the platforms, looking for similar follow or similar creators as the creators that they work with uh, is a great way to potentially uh, shortcut any concerns around, am I going to see the return on my investment, right? It's, it should be just as relevant. Um, and so that's a really, really unique way of doing that. Um, and if you're able to win over people that are organically posting about your competitors, potential market, market share stealing opportunities. Use of relevant hashtags. So again, very similar idea. If if you find creators that are posting things that you care about or that are adjacent to things that you care about, this is a great way to find brand new influencers, almost a backdoor uh, to looking for them using categories or uh, key, specific keyword usage. Hey, this is another way to, to identify creators that are potentially really aligned with what you're already doing. Uh, that high relevance means that they're gonna have really high engagement rates. You're gonna see the success uh, from the campaigns that you're looking for. It shouldn't be out of left field. Uh, from Tavia Moore, uh, she had asked a great question. I tend to avoid creators who have a lot of sponsored content in their feeds. It just feels less authentic. What are your thoughts here? Uh, it can go either way in, honest, in all honesty. What you want to do is really understand what's the performance of their paid content compared to their organic content. Uh, typically, somebody that has really, really strong organic uh, content, they got really, really high engagement rates, really engaged following, they're going to see a little bit lower performance on their paid, but it, it makes sense, right? It's, a, it's an ad. If you find, here's an influencer that just does a ton of ads, uh, and it's really, really high engagement rate, to me, uh, I think you'd want to dive a little bit deeper to make sure that this audience is, is truly authentic, that there's actually value being had. Uh, if an influencer is really good at promoting, using their brand to promote other brands uh, to drive an ROI, that's that's really awesome. But somebody that's almost exclusively commercial, I think you will run into some authenticity issues. You'll see a lower return. It might look like engagement, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will translate into sales. So you do want that mix, right? You do want to have uh, something sprinkled into their organic content because that's what's going to be driving the most engagement. And then if it's aligned, right, you should see that engagement carry over into your post. Even if you find somebody that's always posting authentic engagement or authentic content, if you offer something that's completely out of left field for their audience, you're not going to see success. It has to make sense for the user. Oh, yeah, they've talked about struggling with this in the past, and that's why now I, they're doing a sponsored relationship with this uh, 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 online training company, right? This makes a lot of sense. If it comes completely out of left field, you can just expect the results to be poor. Then it's, it's just more of a branding exercise in that case. Uh, I'll ask, answer this last one, then we'll, we'll jump forward. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I should have held all these at the end. Do I have any advice for finding influencers as a software company? I think the distinction here is, is it B2B or B2C software? Uh, if it's B2B, that would be my suspicion with this question. Uh, yes, but I don't think you'd be thinking about... Uh, influencers on Instagram necessarily. And, and we're actually going to get to this in a later a later slide and a later tactic to, to use. You wouldn't be thinking about creators that are engaging with your audience, but they might not be doing it on social media. You might be able to find them on social media because uh, somebody with a great podcast 
does have an Instagram account and they do engage with their followers on Twitter and you might be able to find them there, but your primary method of promotion and relationship might be over that podcast, maybe something supplemental uh, on YouTube or on Twitter, but the main thing might be this other platform altogether. Uh, in the B2B space, we've seen that uh, be really, really common. I had a great conversation at a, a conference with somebody from, from even at IBM where they find creators on the networks, but then they work with them uh, to post on more traditional channels like LinkedIn or these personal blogs, those relationships where uh, the audience is consuming their content in the right manner and it makes, makes a lot more sense. All right, we're, we're continuing to move here. Uh, another way for finding influencers in 2023, 2023 is uh, people that are similar to your existing influencers. So if you have a broad network of influencers and they work really, really well, there are great tools, right? Hype Auditor is one of them, uh, or just even using uh, the social networks themselves of looking at that creator and finding creators that are just like them in size and engagement and the type of category that they operate in. It's a great shortcut to finding similar people that should see the same type of performance, right? It's not going to be guaranteed because the, the content that they put out is unique. There's probably going to be a lot of unique users in their following. Uh, but because the person is similar in with the engagement, because the person is working with similar types of people, you should see similar results or at least expect to see something similar. Uh, obviously, when you vet them, you reach out to them, you have that conversation. I think you can make the decision uh, in, from those conversations, but it's a great way to sort of springboard into more people. Uh, and this reminds me of uh, my my days doing paid ads, right? If similar audiences are, are always gonna be about 10 times larger than the audience itself. And so if you find creators that you like, if you have a network of a hundred creators, it'll be easy to find a thousand similar people to that. And that means it's really, really easy to expand. Now you still have to do your filtering and all of your process for operations, but that immediately gives you a broader reach to, to pull from. I think we've got two left. This one, uh, I think it can be a little bit more unique for people, but if, you're, uh, have a, if your brand has a prominent position regionally, maybe, maybe you are just an e-commerce brand, but people know who you are because you're in this specific area. Uh, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. There's an e-commerce company called Peter Millar that's here. People know that they are here in this area finding uh, influencers or creators that are in your area is a great way uh, to, to see really high performing campaigns because there's going to be a higher percentage of followers within that area. And those followers might be more familiar with your brand, right? So there's this association of like, Oh, I like that they're working with people that are local. Uh, and I know who this is as well. And it's a, it's a really significant endorsement where people can be proud of where they are. Um, the goal here is probably more on the, the direct response level than it is a you know broad brand awareness campaign uh, but you'll find it's actually easier to connect with these influencers because you're down the road from them uh, metaphorically a little bit depending on what kind of city that you live in uh, so it'll be easier to work with them they have a, a huge audience that's actually right around that area and so there's a really awesome opportunity to do that and then the last one that i had was just and this goes to this b2b which i think if you're a a B2B marketer, uh, like every other channel that's ever existed, pretty soon B2B is going to really dominate uh, influencer marketing. We've seen it with paid social, even Facebook and Instagram, where B2B just comes in and really get, dives in. But I think right now, a lot of folks are thinking, how can I make sense of this when we're not really promoting on Instagram? It's, it's to try to find influencers that have a big following in other places, right? Does somebody run a podcast with with thousands and thousands of unique listens every single week when they put out an episode, that person has influence. Now, maybe when, if they were just to do something on Instagram, you might not, might not get much of a result from there, but Instagram can be the place that you search looking for people that have a podcast host or blogger or whatnot in their uh, bio is a great way to find people that have another way of getting in front of their users. And ultimately, if you can partner with them, uh, as like an entire package, you're going to see an increased reach, a better return because you're just in more places. Awesome. So this was a, a, a bit of a whirlwind, but we went through our eight ways to find influencers in 2023. Just stick with me for a few more minutes here. We're going to be sharing that link to uh, get your own report of 10 influencers. I'll share where you can do that directly in the chat. So you can just click it and submit it. But we talked about 
uh, finding influencers and creators from your existing customers and email subscribers, finding trending creators within your industry or within where you are locally, uh, mentions of other brands with similar buyers so that that lookalike audience, hey, this is the same person I want to work with. They're buying these as well. How can I work with them there? Mentions of competitors, whether it's organic or paid. Use of hashtags that you care about. Regular posting content that you care about. Similar to existing influencers. Thinking regional people around me, businesses around me, brands and creators around me. And then looking outside of traditional channels, right? B2B, again, like LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, places where they have this huge following with of rich content. That might be where there's more value. Don't think about it just as a sponsored post, right? That might just be a, a piece of the puzzle. And in summary, we talked about why influencer discovery should be constant. So always recruiting because of the changing market dynamics, the changing performance of those relationships with influencers. We talked about some of those traditional ways of finding influencers with categories, or I know somebody, or I work with an agency, and then how to do that in 2023. Great. So we ran quick. It's about 2.33. We're a couple minutes past, but I want to open it up for a quick Q&A. And then uh, if I don't have any questions, we'll move forward to uh, uh, a couple of slides with uh, the upcoming webinars that we have, as well as uh, where you can claim your, your list of 10 influencers. So a question from, from Chelsea. Do you have any recommendations for outreach strategy for a gifting campaign versus paid partnerships? Some of it's going to be driven based off of the type of product that you have. Generally speaking, what I would promote avoiding is just sending stuff to people when they don't know, right? Uh, and, and sometimes when you're getting started, it, maybe it's a pretty low commitment concern product. You can just send it out there. But you want to try to build up a relationship with these creators because the more that they're invested in this, the more they're going to want to promote it they're going to want to see that success, right? So if you can do an affiliate relationship with creators, something where you're able to pass through a percentage of sales, something that motivates them to push even harder, uh, that, that will be ideal. Um, now you're going to run into some concerns or some, some challenges there. If you're, if you don't have historical performance doing these giveaway campaigns uh, or gifting campaigns, they're not really going to buy into the idea of getting a percentage. They're just going to want, want the lump sum up front. And so you might have to find some hybrid approach, but that, that's where it sort of coincides with if you can find familiar creators with your brand already, they might be happy to do it because they really stand behind it. But if not, I think you're probably going to find a balance of how can I motivate them with a, a kickback, a percentage? And I would, I would be generous the first time, right? If, if you're a traditional affiliate program offers up 10 or 15% of revenue, Maybe you do 20. It doesn't have to be the forever approach, but maybe with this person, you do something that you really try to incentivize them to promote the heck out of this. I think that's where you can really see a lot of success. Paid partnerships are great, um, but you you really want to find alignment so that the influencer is really invested in putting out a good, a good story, putting out good posts. If they're just checking the box, you can you can waste a lot of money really, really easily. And I know from from personal experience. Um, Cool. Uh, from Trisha, have you ever found diminishing results with lookalike or similar influencers uh, where there could be a lot of overlap of followers? You, you certainly can. So there's what I would say you're, you need to evaluate what your goal is, right? So if your objective is direct response, I want sales, then you actually want to be reaching out to influencers and have multiple posts per campaign. And if there's overlap in the audience, that's actually really, really good because the same person is seeing the, the, the product from multiple people. And that repetition, that frequency is what's going to drive them to purchase. If you want to do brand awareness, though, that's where you're going to see a really, really uh, significant drop off in the value because you're just promoting to the same person. So the brand awareness, maybe there's going to be more callback, more recognition of, of who you are. Sure. But the total number of people is going to be smaller. So you're really balancing like reach and frequency. And so if it's sales, I think that overlap is actually a good thing. Uh, and, and we have a really awesome tool that actually lets you see the overlap of audiences between two influencers. And, and I always tell people, it just depends if you want to do brand awareness or if you want sales. Sales, it's actually really a good thing to have a lot of overlap. 
I'm looking for a non non person influencers like meme pages, but no tool helps me segregate that. Any tips to find them? Um, I think so. I'll stop. I think the big thing will be if you can find one, try to draw from that. Like, well, what did they put in the bio? Right? Maybe they just put meme. Okay, this is a great place to start. Uh, if you find one, like, and again, sort of shamelessly, I would say, like, our, our tool actually will allow you to do this. You could put that influencer there and just find similar types of pages. Uh, and it will pull, pull together similar types of pages based off of the content and the types of followers. Um, so that's that's what I would do. You probably These will probably all be personal accounts. I wouldn't worry about, like, you can filter out businesses. Um, but I think what you want to do is really extract from one that you have found how do they describe themselves? What do they do? What are these other affiliations? It might be a little bit manual at first, just to find that thing that you can then put into the machine and, and get some scale. Uh, I know like Hype Auditor is great with allowing you to search for keywords, allowing you to search for similar types of accounts to, to accounts themselves. Um, and so that combination could really, really help. Uh, the travel industry has been very saturated with use of hashtags. How can we dive deeper and find genuinely good influencers. I think for resorts and hotels, it's similar for makeup. This is where that approach of going adjacent becomes really, really important. So where else do these people operate? Because because you want the creator, right? Because the creator is going to put, put great content out there, but you're really trying to get at the followers, right? And so where else can you find this creator's followers in a, a less, uh, a less, competitive space, essentially, right? Something that's maybe a little bit more reasonably priced, maybe something that's a little bit more unique, but not completely out of left field. Um, so that's what I would do in terms of approach is you're going to need to have your bread and butter. Uh, these are the same approaches I always use for finding influencers. So people do search for in, or search for vacation spots this way. You can't abandon that. But when it comes to finding new stuff, I think you look at well, where else do these people hang out? What other types of content do they follow? And, and one of the things that, again, I feel like we do really well is we can show you what other types of brands these people are, work, are engaging with, these followers engage with, so that you could look, oh, I can find this audience over here as well. Uh, and maybe there's a way that we can strike up some content uh, that's still relevant to this influencer, but it promotes our offering. It's the same person as it was before, but it's less competitive. Uh, for finding influencers on YouTube, uh, this is a great question. Uh, you, you could just use Hype Auditor. Uh, there, there's a lot of different tools out there, um, but YouTube is a great network for rich content, long form content that persists forever, right? People can, you can generate revenue from things that are years old, which is awesome. Uh, you can continue to get downloads from years old uh, things. So, so it's a really, really great channel. It's just a, a matter of finding a tool that allows you to do discovery there. Uh, I, like I know Hype Auditor has a great YouTube discovery engine where you just put in the type of content that people are putting out, uh, how many watches of their content they've gotten recently, uh, and filter based off of some of those unique YouTube parameters. Um, I, Olivia, I, I would ask you to just reach out to me. I can share uh, a little bit more specifically. I'll put my email up um, to talk a little bit further, but uh, there's a tool for that. Um, Tavia, uh, we'll keep on going real quick. Uh, engagement rates, as always, a good point of discussion. Good engagement rates. Uh, so engagement rates can be tricky, I would say. Uh, you cannot obsess over engagement rate because engagement rate isn't always real. You have to make sure, is this truly authentic engagement from folks? Or are there pods here? Are there fake users here? Like, do I see a really, really high engagement rate from this influencer that only does commercial relationships? That would be a red flag to me. And so having a tool that can break down how real is this is really, really important. The rule of thumb, right, is, is smaller influencers have higher engagement rates. That's where you can see more direct response. Larger influencers, you, you might get some benefit of direct response because they have such a large audience, but your goal there really is just brand awareness. It's very expensive, but but it can it can uh, be really really valuable in the long run. Um, I don't think there's a magic percentage. Uh, I do know that our tool does a really good job of. And this isn't meant to be a demo, but our tool actually does a really really good job of showing you engagement rates in context of how it compares to similar influencers. And so, Tavi, I would just say if you if you want to know more, just I'll sit, put my email up. Uh, I can show you what that looks like. 
Um, Caroline or Carolyn Beal, I reach out uh, on the YouTube question again. I'll put my email up here in a second. Uh, continue just to scroll through. Uh, here's my email address. Uh, I wanted it to be personal, right? It, if you're thinking some of these tactics are really, really valuable, I'd love to be able to find people on YouTube. I'd love to be able to do these lookalikes. I'd love to be able to put in my email list and just get creators. Uh, we do have this functionality out of the box to make it a bit more personal. You can you can just reach out to me um, and I can connect with you and, and we can figure out if there's indeed a fit here. Um, my email is hilliard at hypoditor.com, H-I-L-L-I, don't forget the second I, uh, most people do. Uh, you can also just request a demo if you'd like, but um, just to make it a little bit more personal. Um, let's see here, going a little bit more through questions as an influencer on the other side of things. Thanks for a lot of the tips. Awesome. Um, Grad Pavel, it was helpful for you. Um, brand advocates. Uh, so Tavi, I, I think people that are brand advocates, people that are sort of like your face, that's always great. Right, it's it's a, a person that people can resonate with. The big thing is to know that their audience can stagnate, and so if it's the same followers, you're not going to get like eventually you're going to see a decline in sales um, from those followers because they only have so much money or so much need for the the one product, and so that's why you always need somebody that's continuing to get new followers. So an ideal brand ambassador would be somebody that's continuing to grow and see high engagement because then you have a trusted voice. They see all the time and you get all of these new users that are going to engage. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Mm -hmm. I think that we hit a lot of questions. So, so again, here's my email address. Um, I'm getting a lot of vibrations on my phone. So maybe I'm, I'm getting a lot of emails right now. Feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have. We're going to, we have one more or two more slides and then we'll have where you can actually request your list of influencers uh, with your CSV and your, your specific uh, parameters. Uh, real quick, just to save the date. Uh, funny enough, I didn't, I don't think I put it on there. On the 23rd, Monday the 23rd, uh, we'll be doing a webinar, our state of influencer marketing. We put this out, this report out every single year. It's referenced uh, all over the globe in terms of media coverage. And so we'll be doing our dive into trends and changes and just really interesting things that are happening in influencer marketing. Uh, we were able to get uh, Gordon Glenister, who wrote Influencer Marketing Strategy, as a guest host. So me and him will be talking about uh, different benchmarks and things that are happening, uh, just in interesting things. So please save the date for that. Uh, we'll include it in our follow-up. We'll have a, a page where you can go ahead and register for that. But that will be uh, Monday the 23rd. And then this is that last page. So I'm going to post the link in the, the chat. Um, if you visit this uh, URL, you'll see, provide your name, uh, your email address, the brand that you care about, and your influencer parameters. What, what things matter to you uh, as a brand for finding influencers? Get very, very creative. We'll be using these methods that we found here. Obviously, not the customer list one. Uh, we don't have you know like that direct integration to do on your behalf. Um, if you were to sign up, you could do it yourself. But but we'll be doing these other methods, lookalikes and whatnot, to create a list of, of, of influencers. We'll send those along with uh, their audience quality score, the engagement rates, the authentic audience percentage, uh, a bunch of other metrics so that you can see how easy it is to find uh, a similar relevant creators. So again, that link is in the, uh, in the chat and you can just click that and submit that and, and someone from our team will follow up with that export. Uh, probably give us a, a day or two or so uh, to follow up with that just as we manage who's going to send it out and whatnot, but that's that's available there. Um, and with that, I just want to thank everybody for, for joining the webinar today. Uh, I had a great time. I, I really enjoyed everybody's questions. We moved really, really quickly, but we'll send along uh, where you can watch this again in the future, as well as the presentation deck. Uh, and then if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself uh, uh, happy to help uh, folks as they're trying to tackle this, as they're thinking about growing their revenue, doing more with less in 2023. And with that, have a great rest of your week. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you all soon.